Right. Okay. Okay, thanks for being with us, everybody. It's great to see you. It's my birthday today, so this is a good birthday present for me to see so many people, so many friends from around the, the society and around the world. And I'm grateful for you to support for supporting this event. I'm super grateful to Valerio. Uh, he's come roaring back from, Amer uh, from Africa, Senegal, um, doing some interesting project, which I hope you'll talk about uh, to us. Um, Valerio, maybe, if you have time. Um, and, um, you know, as I've already mentioned, it's great for us to have at least half an Italian and a 100% citizen of Italian. I've never been to Ibiza, so I'm looking forward to hearing about that island. And um, once again, um, we'll, we'll do the presentation, then we'll have open up the for questions. You can write questions on the chat or you can Unmute yourselves and try and, uh, you know, we'll just manage it as it comes. Okay, so now I'm going to share the screen um, with Valerio. Grazie per essere con noi. Do I start? Yes, start. There you go. Okay. Great. Okay, thank you, Angela for inviting me. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, that I think I don't know any of you. Um, it's a, when, when I received the call, I really didn't know what to talk about. And, and I will try my best. Um, the presentation I prepared, don't be scared, but is 150 slides, but there are many that will pass fast. And the title of the of the um, of this talk is in search of coherence in the garden, um, because coherence I think it's will will appear later in a project, but it's it's something that I need to um, to to justify myself, um, like I'm doing something that makes sense uh, in many aspects. So I'm going to talk really briefly about my, my background and how I, how I started. I half Spanish, half Italian. Uh, I, I was born in Rome, but when I was six months, my parents, they moved to Madrid and, and immediately they, then I started, uh, I did all my, my, my I, was, I grew up in Madrid. Um, in the late 90s, early 2000, I, I went to Italy and, and I arrived to the gardening world because I was really, really lost. And, and I had one year that I spent in Tuscany, in close to Monterigioni, uh, working in, a, in an agriturismo, in a, in a really beautiful space. And there I discovered uh, the first Italian gardens where I got, um, I, 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 I came in love with them. Um, there, uh, the, 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 the year after I started the Minoprio Foundation in, uh, in the north of close to Como, uh, I did a gardening course. And when I was there, uh, I did a stage in Mopoli Gardens for six months. And, and from there, I passed to Villa Castello. And, and there was a moment that I had to, came, to come back to, to Spain because personal uh, problems or life. And, and there I, I started the, the, a master in, in the University of Madrid. And in the meantime, I, I become to know the name of Fernando Caruncho, a landscape designer, a Spanish landscape designer uh, in Italy. When I arrived to Spain, I, I wanted to work with him. And after a long, long time, I, I managed to work with him. In this first stage of the, um, of the, um, the part of the Boboli Gardens, Villa Castello, Fernando Caruncho, I thought I was, I think I was really lucky because um, this is the first garden that I went in, I came in love with uh, Villa Gamberaya. 
because it's narrative that I think it's really, really strong. And, and it's really well linked to landscape, showing how to show the garden, creating spaces. And, and I think this part of the narrative uh, was something hidden in the garden that at the end, later in the years, I, I understood that was that what, what it took my, my, my interest into this garden. This the equilibrium of elements. I think it's a tiny uh, garden, quite modern, uh, but that holds many things that I find really interesting. Poboli Gardens, of course, is wow, a masterpiece. And it's a place where, um, where I was working as a real gardener, um, having a... Um, the, being really lucky to be able to, um, to learn from old gardeners or people that took the, um, the garden when they were 18 in the, six, in the, in the 60s, late 60s, late 60s. And, and at the end, it was this part of heritage of the old gardeners that nowadays with all the techniques has changed a lot. Boboli Garden is a, I don't know if it's 30 hectares garden. Uh, you see, if I'm not wrong, it's, they have to prune every year uh, 360 kilometers of hedges. So the task is, is quite strong. It's a really formal garden. Um, but I find one point that is really interesting that it's all the vegetal palette and how some huge garden like this can, can survive with really little water, with really little maintenance, and how, how strong it is, how resilient. Then I, well, Villa Castello, it's more, it, I came here to do a study of the lemon collections, uh, and I did a little tesis. And this was Fernando Caruncho that at the end he takes many parts of history and I think it's a person with a high, with a with really strong eye in seeing spaces, seeing spaces and tracing connections of spaces. Um, but here, for example, we can see Boboli, uh, same structure. We can see Japan. There are many, many concepts inside these images. So um, in 2004-2005, I set up my studio in Madrid. Um, it was uh, at the beginning in, in a city, normally you start doing terraces, uh, patios, uh, working with interior designers. Um, this in this place, for example, for me, the do you see the arrow in the screen? Yes. I, okay. yes. This bit is uh, for me one of the most important parts of this of this terrace because I was creating link in the terrace to the two images that was were close by, and so we tried to create something that somehow the people thought was always been like this. Um, this same terrace, the, this was an upper level with another kind of dialogue. And, and this is the last part in Madrid when as a, as a garden, um, when, when I received this commission, I was asked to do um, a Japanese and French inspired garden, which I don't know exactly with, what it is, uh, there was a really um, limited situation that the, the owners, they had bought all the pavement. So I had a limited um, amount of square meters of pavement, which I distribute in the gardens in different ways. Here, all what you see uh, from windows to the outside was designed by the studio, pool, everything. And this is a garden that it's really, really, really um, 
static somehow. Um, but it was really linked to the reality of the of the owner, and that it was a really dominative person. Um, and always I was trying to introduce water features to play a bit with the light of the spaces. And at the end, this garden, I I find it really interesting um, how the plants, the colors in this garden were given by seasons, were not flowers. And, and it's, a, it's all the hedges around the garden is pure. So when I rise spring, it's completely full bloom in white. And then I rise autumn and becomes yellow. And then when I rise winter, it comes the, the wood. So in a um, kind of maniatic, repetitive and insistent uh, use of this plant, uh, the effect created was really strong. And, and for a static garden, the variation in seasons was really, really strong. So this is where I came from and first bits of my, of my, of my path. Uh, when I was in Madrid, the studio was working in Madrid, um, but also in Palma de Mallorca, north of Spain, different kind of gardens, loan, water with no problem, and all these things. And I think it was around 2007, 2008, I received the first commission to do in, in Ibiza. So when I arrived to Ibiza, always with a studio in Madrid, this is the kind of garden that I was doing. Uh, I find them now naive. Um, I find them more looking into aesthetic that probably in this garden, it was many of the plants were chosen by the client. Many times I'd say that I, I don't do my, my garden. I do some other person gardens. So many times I, I, I use things that probably um, I, I would not in, in, my, in my house. Um, but here what I was, I, I had a range of temperature and the only thing I was watering more or less, but I was not thinking in water as a problem, in this, this resource. And the, the, the limitation part for plants, for me, it was the soil and the, the, the heat, the heat or the frost. The same garden, and this is another garden, but always with using loam, um, using in this case uh, penicetum with an invasive uh, with a strong invasive um, capacity, uh, which are things that now I'm not doing at all. Uh, this same garden, it's Ibiza. This is 2006, and here in this same garden, I started using more indigenous plants in in blocks in another way. Um, where I try to play more soft, softly, uh, relating the garden with, with nature. Um, this is the same garden where many times in Ibiza, one thing that we have is most of the gardens are open to landscape. So the relation with landscape is really different than in a garden in a city that normally is closed and you can do your microcosm in the way you want. Um, and here in 2008, I received a commission for, for a marina in San Antonio. It's a, a, it was probably one of the nicest places in Ibiza. It's a beautiful bay that as many places in Mediterranean uh, have been destroyed by tourism. And now it has a really, poor quality of tourism, of um, big flights that come with all the pack, they stay, they don't drink a lot and, and not. And there was a program in the town hall of trying to change a little bit of this, of this way of, of doing of San Antonio. 
And when I received the commission of this marina, the partners of the marina, most of them are Ibizenkan. And I was asked to do a garden with, um, with palms and flowers. So they were asking me to do some Florida or Miami garden. Uh, so they were looking elsewhere to do at home. Um, at the end, I managed to convince them to, to, to do something else. Uh, in this case, it's pistachia lentiscus, uh, olive, and chamen of sumilis, which are three Mediterranean plants. In the case of pistachia, it's been used a lot in Ibiza for, for, for doing, sorry, because this should be, sorry, I thought I had this. Oh. Pistachia lentiscus is a plant that is being used a lot to, to, to in the forest to, 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 to do the limestone, to do the cleaning of forest. The, the, the earth under the Pistachia lentiscus is a really good earth that is being used for improving the, the um, veggie patch. So it was a, a plant that, were, that they were re related with. And the olive at the end is something that they've been nourishing by the, the oil. Uh, here, just by pruning, that wind is something that does in nature, I create these shapes, uh, having a kind of um, idea of the waves that is really close by. And this garden was curious because when I was building this, uh, the client of the first garden I showed in Ibiza, the one I said it was naive, he passed, he saw this, and he was um, not happy seeing that I was planting mata. Mata is the pistachia lentiscus. Mm. Uh, and, and he was, even he became a bit angry, like he was spending the money in something that he didn't like. Um, because for him, it was so vulgar. Um, and after one year, I came to, to check the pruning, how it was going and everything. And, and I, I was lucky that I met him again uh, by, by surprise, by chance. And, and he was giving me compliments about the garden, about the entrance, because he got surprised of what was possible to do with the matter. This bit for me was <coughs> a really important part, um, something that was, I like it a lot because I was, I, I was being able to, to make an Ibizenkan be proud of, of the old and seeing that with this, it was possible not by looking Miami uh, to have something beautiful for the entrance of the, of the marina. So this is, it was um, before I arrived in Ibiza. There already I was taking many, many data but till I didn't arrive here, uh, it was not full my my knowledge or my because if it it's a really special reality, really extreme in many aspects. Um, and here I have the the customers that I have the the period of the use of the garden. It can change, can be people that live here the year round, so it's easier for a Mediterranean garden can be only during the summer. Those ones normally they want more show gardens. Uh, they ask a lot all the edible gardens. Many of the people that come here to live, they want to run away from the city life. And, and the maintenance, they don't like to use pesticide, most, most of them. So it's, it's people that is really aware of problems or situation that can be done in some other way. The, pro the, 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 um, the properties can be, there are normally two, two different houses uh, or super modern and super sophisticated or really old fincas. And the old fincas are um, much nicer, but, but, but also more difficult to work. Um, the plots, the average uh, dimension of the plots, it's uh, to build a house, you need at least one hectare and a half. So it's big gardens. 
Um, and normally all these houses, as I said before, are really strong connected with the surrounding because as it's a big plot, it's not that they have hedges or whatever. In, in terms of professional people that I work with, um, Ibiza has a problem of people that that is not um, consistent in terms of living in Ibiza. And many people come here just for the season. They say they are gardens, but they say that they know to take a shower and move earth. That's it. That's it. But it's not that if they work outside, I will call them gardens. And, and it's for the maintenance is dramatic. Um, so has to be all these things has to be taken in consideration when you propose something because many times it's too difficult to to make them understand and and then the climate here it's as, as all we know uh, this strong draft uh, with a lot of heat there is a lack of of um, of water a real lack of water uh, and really salted it's really strong light and really salted winds and the, and the soil is really poor. Um, well, here I said one thing that is agostamiento, that is with what I will close the, the talk that I will tell you later. This is a really fast thing to say and uh, to check. This is um, the, the weather average data from 1998 and if you see the average um, waterfall from uh, here is in 2099 it was 236 millimeters a year here in 2314 then we rise to 400 a bit more nearly 500 400 sometimes there is some strange year with nearly 800 that is really really strange but being under the 350 hundred millimeters is something really normal. And here we have, um, it's a bit hilly. So all the water or more, most of the water at the end, it runs into the sea. And taking with it a lot of organic material. So Ibiza, one of the parts that has been really strong, the change is that the evolution um, it comes from a self-consumption island, really poor, uh, to this, to Nouvelle and the big architects or whatever, doing crazy things, a lot of villas, long pools. Um, but this, this jump, it has happened in the last 50 years. Something that is not the, um, there are still some houses without a, a bathroom. So it's, it's something that has been so violent, so aggressive that I find in all this part of coherency that, the, um, that has to appear some um, connection in, in, the line, in the timeline uh, that we are not cutting so strongly this, this these relations at the end. So here in, in Ibiza, when I arrived, um, I did a little experimental garden that I will show you later. Um, and I've done a lot. I like to walk in nature. I do, I like to sports outside. And I find so inspiring and so difficult. And I don't want to reproduce this because I, be, I think I will never be able to do something similar, that the strength of the plants, how they survive in a rock, how they grow, how they compose, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and are so simple, so don't know, easy. Here there is Iparrenia irta, there is this one I think is Ferula communis, Lavandas toechas, uh, Son Sabina behind, Juniper Sabina. And working with people, this is a person that is not anymore here. It was a big expert in, um, in ecology. Um, and it's beautiful to look and check many endemisms 
and to go recognize, uh, try to imitate situations of, of soils or understand the plants. And this part of understand the plants, I think is really important. Here's another part of inspiration, pruning. Pruning, many people associate pruning uh, with, with a too dominated garden. And I think the domination of the garden is starts in the moment of planting a plant and deciding that we are planting and we are doing some kind of part which is artificial. So these kind of loops are always a point of inspiration to me. Movement, movement in, 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 with, a, with the wind and movement in seasons, <clears throat> biodiversity, more endemisms. Um, full uh, blooms, uh, the blooming part in Mediterranean normally is big blocks. It's, uh, this is something in big fields uh, that happen like really strongly. And this is, this, is, this is a picture that I took to, to review. That is a part that is really difficult, the, um, the dry shade and the, the dry shade. Um, and this is a bit of a provocative um, picture, but I find it really interesting because draft, what it means is dry. And dry, it happens in a moment that normally we want to be outside in the garden, or especially the tourists, the tourism. Because in a, um, me, in summer, I like to be in the garden then at night. And uh, during the day, it's too hot, too hard. But yellow, as, <laughs> as Pete Udolf said, uh, brown is also a color. And it depends how you compose. Um, and if we want to do some kind of na naturalistic approach to the garden, this has to be assumed. And this should be introduced as an ingredient into the, into the landscape, into the garden. Of course, just yellow is too dry. But if it's composed with other greens, and it will work perfectly. And here probably this will be around June, the carrots uh, still, uh, still are there. And here uh, the experimental garden. When I arrived, um, this was my old place. It was a rental house. And here I did, I've done this, this, this picture because one thing that I'm doing now is most of the times not preparing the ground. And I don't prepare the earth or at least I don't add any, anything else. The only thing that I prepare is to decompact. The part, the drainage is a key part in Mediterranean garden. But here, if you see the, the soil is, is really, really poor. In this case, it was a moment of more humidity and, and this is a bit tricky because I, I didn't remind this with this darkish part. Um, and these are tools that I use to do the holes, but this tool, many times I have to go back and to, to put it, to, because normally it, it bends and of so stony that it is. Um, this garden, this is April, 2016. These are plants that I took um, plants from Philippines. Uh, I took plants from from uh, Pepinier Vosgin that I love what he has, but it's really tiny, small collection plants. Uh, some bulbs from bulbs that jars, uh, and a few plants from Spanish um, uh, nurseries in Girona. There are a couple, three, four that are really good ones. Culti Delta and Biorriza, no Carex right now. Um, and taking their advice, I was asking them plants that I will plant with the real decision of not watering them. So here is the technique that Filippi said, um, big hole, no preparation of any food or, or organic material, good uh, water reservoirs, and water really little, a lot. Uh, but spacing a lot in time. So this garden 
uh, was evolving little by little. Here, this not uh, aesthetic uh, approach. It was, I have a hole, I have an empty space, I put a plant. It was this the only, the only how it came. And this it was one year after, another year after, and this is four, four years of plants. Here on this stage, the plants, well, this is in April, so it's a really good moment for a Mediterranean garden. Um, at this stage, I water only um, a thymus that I wanted to, to keep, but and an, an Fistus florentinus that also were struggling a little bit in summer. But the rest of the plants, all of them, maximum I was giving two waters a year. Maximum, maximum, maximum. And many of them, probably here, for example, there is an Eriogonum gigantium that this, it, it, if you give water, it dies. So mm, there were many, many plants that are, were totally 100% without water. Um, and this was as a place where I experiment and, and I enjoy it a lot. Um, sadly, this year I moved from place, so now I don't have a, a garden that took five years to, to start growing. And, and here, um, well, most of the plants are really common. This year is, I think it's um, are flummies, uh, santolinas, cistus, euphorbias, many kinds. The flummies are many kinds. It's, I don't know, tilostemon, some stipa. And this is something that I really like. Well, this is September. So September is already some, this is an euphorbia dendroide that is already starting with the new leaves. But there is this part of dormancy of the garden in summer, I find it really nice. October, okay. Here, I'm going to talk about uh, two projects in, well, three with the Senegal, but Senegal is going to be really fast, Angela, I'm sorry. Uh, two projects that, um, that I find them interesting because are quite, well, they have two things that are really quite kind of extreme. This is a, a project that is 1000 square meters. And here, I always say when I start a project, the first thing that I put is, is wishes of client, this analyzing house, this and that. But to, for me, it's really important to see which is what the condition in factors. So, um, and this will shape already the garden. Here we have extremely salty soil, extremely salty water, extremely salty wind, a lot of sun, a lot of rocks or a big rock. And it's a garden in first line of the, of the house. And in these 1000 square meters, we have three realities really different, but it's in one side is totally open to the sea and in the other is more like a urban garden. So this is a presentation. This was a really, fast presentation. And here we have analysis of um, this case is the water that we had. Uh, you see a conductivity uh, here is high. Uh, calcium uh, limestone is really high. Uh, magnesium also, and, and it has at the, at the end um, sulfates and chlorus. And then here is the analysis of the soil. Here I have two analyses. One, the part that is in the seaside, another one is the part that is inside. In all these analyses, there is one fact that is terrible about there. If you see all the red parts, is something that should be not red. And so it has several, but it has a really, really poor organic material, the conductivity and that it is not working. And then look at the sodium, that it has is a crazy number. This one, this is the one in the in the in the in the front line of the garden, and this is earth in the back part of the garden that is not receiving the waves during the winter. So the the sodium, it's high, but it's in a more reasonable range. 
this is the garden. Well, this, this was the, the, the original image, Google, uh, Google Earth. Um, so this is a cliff that is around 20 meter high. The garden, <coughs> sorry, the garden is this. So it has a part really related to the landscape, to the sea. And this part that is more, I work at this like a patio and a little forest area. Uh, the same as I was, let me go back one second, as I was always looking for the plants, what I wanted here it was to create a continuation of what was outside the fence. That was the, the landscape. Mm, so the plants that work it really well is Arteriscus maritimum. Here we have a little bit of, of carrot, um, Critmum maritimum. Um, this it was, um, uh, I think this is an invasive. This was not, and Frankenia. So how I read this garden? Uh, I separated, as I said, in these three parts, patio, a forest and front garden or, or cliff garden. And, and at the end, the relation was here, it was really important to relate it with the, with the house. And in the house, uh, it was already shaped this first square, this second square. And what I did, I just added a third square. And this third square, um, I added this square by placing this wall and creating a double uh, green hedge uh, that was creating the circulations to the garden. And in this square, it was placed a really tiny pool uh, that is more like a water mirror. Uh, it's three or 250 per four. It's a really tiny space. The architect was suggesting to have it here. But here for me, it was too much a competition with the sea and was not creating that, that interest. Um, so this is the, oh, I the, the drawing. And this, is a, this was a really fast presentation in this garden. Normally we do more water colors and other kind of things. In this garden, another thing that I was, this was the fourth square that I, I placed here. In this garden, another thing that is, for me important is to create some kind of repetitions and to, um, to have a, to create harmony. So this height was a height given by these steps that was existing. And I was repeating this. So the heights are repeated through the garden. This is a, um, um, a list of plants. I don't know if somebody wants it. I'm open to share everything. And this was when the, when the garden was planted. So as you see here, you can see this for this third square and where happens all the patio. And it's a big contrast, what we have inside and what we have more inside the, this outdoor living room and the, the real rough um, garden outside of the cliff. Um <clears throat> here I'm going to stop one second here. Let me check to show you. Um please check this area of the of the screen to see the water. This is a winter day, and the water that you will see in the garden is salty water, it's not rain. So this is what I what we really have here. Second, and now I have to come back here. Okay. <clears throat> so when I arrived to the garden, it was this the reality. This was the um, the, fr well, the front area with the with the sea, a beautiful view. But well, this deck, it was an addition that I did. Um, but it was originally the a previous owner and create an horizontal and 
and wanted to have a, a, a big loan area, which didn't work. And at the end, it was a muddy area. So what we did, it was to, as we were in the cliff and it's everything is rock. The first thing I removed all the earth to check where the, where the rock was and to see which was the, um, the layer of earth that I, I was able to use and which were the areas where the water, we were doing some tests here in different places, putting water and seeing the, the water was draining or not. So looking at the end in the natural cracks of the rock. So this was, and, and this at the end, when I did this and I planned all this, um, was impossible to plan because till I didn't open this, it was impossible to see how were the plants were going to be distributed. So at the end, when I opened everything, I suddenly saw this kind of path that was a higher layer of rock that I decided to leave it open. This path uh, was totally connected with the here you, I don't know if you can see it properly, but this, when you are in the place, is totally connected with the, with the um, shape of the, of, the, of the cliff. And here, um, I was too optimistic, but here it was a really, really rough way to place areas with a bit of higher plants and areas with lower plants. This garden, uh, we are not water watering, but well, we water by hand. And during the summer, we water some plants once every two weeks. Uh, and this part of the coast of, of Ibiza is one of where the wind is stronger. So uh, here you don't see, but the, the indigenous forest after each winter is completely burned. Um, this is how it's, well, this probably was after one year of planting. And in this garden, I have to say that many plants in this part, many plants dies every year. And it's a continuous battle. Um, and here I have a question that I put to myself that when I do this kind of gardens that I want to go to the naturalistic and to the less maintenance and trying to make the plant work by itself, I don't know if it's wise to plant the final image that you want in the garden, that, but more probably to fill this with, to over plant somehow this and to create a natural succession of plants. So creating with another plants barriers that will help these ones that we are planting to, to survive. This is same image, this is in the same garden. This is the patio area. This was in the works. Here, for example, using the um, sandstone here, typical here in Ibiza that we have to bring from Mallorca. This was the wall added and which was the, the pool. And here, little by little, growing the, the garden. So this is all the... Um, <clears throat> This part of the garden, um, here in this garden, we have a big problem when we water also with the, with the quality of the water um, in many aspects. So, and now this winter, I want to, to check and to review this garden in terms of watering, because I want to push a little bit the garden to help it to shape and to, to create properly the shape because it's going too slow. Um, in this garden, the clients, they were uh, open to experiment and to go in a, in a bit extreme way because I've done gardens with same plants, more in a traditional way. And in one year and a half, the garden is, is much more compact. And this is taking a really long time. Um, I absolutely adore uh, pomegranate grapes. Um, I find it super interesting. And here in Ibiza, we have a lack of autumn colors. Um, this is the front garden. This picture probably is one year ago. Um, and it's really rough. 
it's really rough. See, here, if you see this part of the image, is a bit better, this bit. Here we have a channel of wind that is really critical. And of course, I would I could put some plans that I know that it will work, but I'm too pushing into special plants. Here, one plant that is working really well that I planted one year ago is this one that I hope it will help us. This is a Antilles barbajovis and it's working really well. Here, for example, this is um, Sabina um, Juniperus, and all the Juniperus are completely burnt. All the Pistacia lentiscus completely burnt. So it's it's really, really tough, the situation, really tough. And here are the ones that are growing really well is the Asteriscus maritimum, <coughs> the Critmum, <coughs> Limoniastrum, that is the, this is the variety that, well, now, he used to have it, uh, but now many more other, they have the carnival one that is more a, more a reptant. And now in this moment, they are, are blooming the, the Virginia Maritima. And then I have different kind of limonium uh, here. And I'm trying to, with the insignia that is working pretty well. And well, this was an original plant when it was here, the Bougan Bill. <clears throat> And here, steep atenuism is something that I I like it, but there are plants that are, when are overused, I get bored, and I try to not to use them. But this was a request from the client, so there are different kinds of emerocalis from from Ivo and Leo from Sardinia, and this is this is a bit how it looks. And in this garden, one thing that I do is I let the weeds grow. That this is something also that depending how one where weeds for me are welcome. And in this approach of gardening, this is another plant that I normally don't use, but in this case, it was easy to all hear all the details of showers, everything we, we like to to shape many things. Here it was the forest area, that here the only intervention was the fence, adding a bit of plants around. And we planted ivy, Ruscus aculeatus. And then the, here there are, um, I, oh, I think this is panicus. And there are um, some, it is a uh, formosana. This uh, ifeum, this is a little e collection of ifeum in this. So there are many bulbs that here and there they they are ripe, but there are many other may, many plants that doesn't work. And here the only addition was these two um, two platforms. That the platform, the wood platform, is something that I like because has the feeling that it's not touching the ground and it's not so invasive in depending which situations. And this is the same garden, so it's see everywhere. Same garden, same garden. Same garden. But this is a bit of um, some of the plants and flowers that in these pictures don't appear, but are, these ones are, are plants from this garden. Okay, can rain. This is a totally different work. This is uh, in the south of Ibiza, close to the airport. Um, it's one hectare and a half. And here the big limitation fact that it we have, that we had no water. Well, we had the water only to bring it by truck. Um, in this house, it was a house really disconnected with the surrounding. Um, it had the, a big driveway in the sand, in the front part of the garden. And then so it, it has a huge sky, a big sun. It's an area of, of Ibiza with the light that is stronger than, than others. This was the original, um, um, the original um, view of the garden. It's 
the main house mm -hmm. is an apartment and the and the pool area. They had all this bit with loan, really well, a uh, really bad cap, and this uh, driveway with the cars that they were putting just in the front, in, in the front door in front of it. So for me here, this was really disturbing how it was. And, and it was really flat, this garden. Uh, if you see here, the houses, these kind of houses that start uh, decomposing the houses in, in like in facades. Um, and the, the plot from here to here, it was one meter and a half or maximum two meters of, of um, change of level. So was the feeling was a flat garden. Quite boring uh, with this house really ugly that they were having it in front. So here I, um, having no water, it's really important to check how we face a garden. Uh, of course, I'm, I say I do garden with no water is not totally true, but trying to use in a wise way the water. Uh, this house is really close by to, um, to the Salinas. In fact, it's around here, the house. Um, and Salinas, it, has, um, it was the only industry that Ibiza had. Uh, and here, this is Marrakesh. And it's a scheme that reminds you a lot um, to the Salinas. So for me, Salinas uh, has something that is a key part that, of course, is the squares. But uh, water gives you horizontality. And, and this horizontality, is, it was also related with the facades of the, of the building, that even if are vertical, but really straight lines. Here are again hedges of these are natural hedges in, in a field in Ibiza of Pomenegrade. And this was the solution I proposed. So I took away, this was the old entrance that they are right here. So I removed this and the, I moved the entrance to the back and to the back of the house, having the a pergola really close by to the, to the, to the pool or, and to the main entrance, but not having the cars in front. So this was a guest uh, parking that they had a really long walk to the house. Uh, and from the house, uh, the house, it has many um, gaps and many like um, access. And I took this access and translated it into the garden in a really simple way. It was not a, and here I had an extra axe in the main entrance. In fact, this wall, I added this one. And the, um, how I divide the garden in terms of water and intensity of, of, of water and gardening, it was a garden more kept uh, around the house, a veggie patch uh, surrounded by, um, by hedges of, of pomegranate. And then for this, a bit the same that this here we've been even more, more extreme because at the end we, we did here everything with really, really little water. And then we have all this green part that is more forest or forest plants, all this bit. And then in the central part, I played with these uh, squares related with the Salinas and where the original idea it was to have a foraging uh, plants for foraging, foraging is, no, the, yes. for, the, for the animals, the thing that we, we had too too little water for uh, to do for doing that. <clears throat> so at the end, we did a plant of of seeds of mustard, and and now this year probably we will we will we will do a planting of a natural meadow with asphodelus, phoenicus, and different different kind of plant that we will see. So this was the, this is Salina Sinibiza. This is the image of the garden a little bit. And here I go back because all these fields in the middle, the idea was to create this, this feeling of, of, of yellow in summer. And this was the garden around the pool and around the, here in this garden, I didn't did anything in the pool, which I will have done um, happily. <clears throat> and this was the, um, 
the garden. In this garden, there is one element that is this big circle that is a huge footbridge. <clears throat> Till I didn't arrive to this footbridge, I didn't find that I the key part of the garden. And we were all really worried about if it was really necessary spending all, all this money for this footbridge. And, and every time that I go there, the, the owner, he reminds me this. And he was like, we were everybody silent seeing this, if we was, was good to do it or not. And at the end, it's been a really good thing because it links somehow the whole garden and it creates a rhythm and a separation of part that it's really interesting, I think. This is um, the, what I, when I arrived, what I found. <clears throat> and here, if you take some parts of the building, this is when I arrived, here you have the same view, more or less, with all the earth movement, walls, uh, and to create these little um, earth movements to play also with the, with the monotony of the garden and to create something a bit more. Here it was the planting of, the, of all the forest part. In this garden, we moved, if I'm not wrong, it was 1,400 or 1,600 cubic meters of earth. All the earth that we moved, it stayed in a plot. We didn't bring even one track. We didn't took out even one track. So it was everything compensated in the plot. This was the, and this is the same image. Here, it was still to do all the central part, but if you see in, in some years, and it's not been that much, all the forest part took over. Uh, here, of course, the first years, we needed to water this garden. Right now, they are watering this, all the forest part, uh, two times in summer, every month, month and a half depending if it's too hard or not. <clears throat> this is another view. Here it was the old entrance. Here is the footbridge. And here is the same image. And here we introduce all these fields of mustard um, seeds. Here under the footbridge, uh, we create a huge um, system of drainage that was, I was too optimistic uh, another time uh, because I did here at the end a pond to ac accumulate water, um, which we have the water when it rains, but uh, to accumulate water in something like this, you have to have a really big tank and always uh, covered completely something not to play with or because it rains in the winter and by summer, this is gone. Um, so all this is a huge trench, uh, sorry. It's a huge trench uh, where we passed uh, the drainage, but as well all, all the installation and the communication of the garden. This year we planted that year the part of the forest but was still the trench, and the year after we started with the with the footbridge, and this year. This is a garden that, in terms of installations, is quite complex. The um, the owners. Um, they work in like in music industry, so it's ready to have many kinds of sound system or projection or art or around the garden. So it was it was quite complex in electricity, in data, and many things. So. Mm. This is what, when I arrived and what we did, it was always playing with changing of, of a bit the, the height of the, of the, 
the, the earth movement. Then this, this garden, when you see the planimetry is really strict, really straight, but when you walk through, uh, it's not. Uh, you have some big perspective, but it's it breaks immediately and it was a bit like a kaleidoscope. This is in, with the mustard with full blooming and all, all this area is what now we want to, to improve a little bit. This was, this was an original wall. This was a wall added to create, again, the access and the effect of surprise of the people that when they were coming to the main square at the beginning, at the entrance of the house, the garden was open. So for me, this narrative of, of gardens is always a part really important, how to tell a story and how to, to make the people move around the space. Here are typical verbena bonariensis, no, nothing special, and also Mulemberger capillary is nothing special. Mm, in this garden, uh, just to make you an idea, the piece of lawn that we have here, that is 320 square meters, takes more water than the rest of the garden. I'm passing some pictures. It's, this is a picture taken in summer. And this part, uh, for example, here um, is something that I have to review in this garden with the gardeners that is in certain spaces, how they are watering. Because I think in some places they are watering even too much and they water really little. Hello. This part of the garden, just to make a point, uh, here there was supposed to be a little pergola to create a dialogue with the house, and it's exactly at the same height as the living room. So everything comes down, comes down, comes down, and here in the footbridge you have like a like an eagle nest. This, this garden in terms of botany is not especially interesting. It has something, but nothing. And now little by little, because this is a big garden um, and is what I, exactly yesterday I talked with the, with the owners. I want to, to improve this because at the end now, what we have in this garden that is already working is the structure of the garden. So now we need to, to make it more fast. Okay, Senegal. <laughs> Senegal is something really fast, what I'm going to talk to you. Um, I, was I was called last year um, by a person that I know, an architect, that he was involved in this project in Senegal. And he told me that maybe it was good to have a trip there in COVID time. That was uh, kind of difficult to get there. Uh, to check this place because there were some things that he was not happy to how it was. Um, well, the conditioning factors is how it's disconnected the, the part of the school. It's a school uh, in, the, in the south of Senegal, in the area of Casamans, south of Gambia. And it's totally disconnected the school with the landscape, the space. And it was something that the architect was insisting to have this connection. But from the village, the, it, he was forced to create a wall around the, the school. Then the economical situation, this is a no profit project. So funds is not a place where we have money. Um, lack of standard materials. Mm, don't know, scissors, you don't have it. Um, it's maximum a hammer and a stick. It's something that you have to change a lot. What do you want to ask? and which is going to be the effort to get this. The soil is a, an area, um, a river area, but where we were working, it was really poor because they dig a little bit and it was, it's really sandy. It's, it has minerals, but really poor in organic material. Uh, a request from the school, it was, uh, they wanted to have citrus in the, um, in the garden. And what I see, it was the maintenance they were, they were swapping the whole garden and 
and burning everything. So the little organic material that they were getting, it was uh, took away. This is the school, this is the project. Mm. Every brick, everything is done with the material of the ground that they have. So um, it's been really, um, don't know, efficient how they build. And this was what I found. The outside, it was like this, and the inside was like this. So this is the whole idea of the garden. At the end, what I proposed was just to mark some areas inside the fence to let the, the forest grow and not to be cut. So it was not about planting. It was about letting the plants grow in the places that we want. And then with a, um, a review every year for the next two years, uh, I will go there or buy a video or whatever and check what do we will keep and what we will cut. But it's something that we don't know what is going to appear. Um, so this is a bit the what that I I call it nichos the vegetación and and inside I propose to take areas as a veggie garden taking shapes of the surrounding. This is a picture taken in the river that was probably two kilometers far away. So this is the so the situation that they have now and this it was the solution that I propose. Because here as well. A garden for a school in Senegal, in a place where people have nothing or really low possibilities in life, or it was contradictory and even bad taste of doing a garden. So what I thought, what I would be able to give to these kids as knowledge, and it was a bit this of mm, enjoy what you have, and see that depending how we work with what we have can be nice. And this, that is don't burn everything, um, but reuse the organic material. That is something really simple is to compost, it's not. So this was the, um, the proposal. It's a school that now it's holding 700 for, or 800 kids probably will be a little bit enlarged. And these areas were the one that I was proposing to plant around. And then inside each of the, the this is for one year of the school. The, this is another year, it's four years, the school, each of those, instead of having one citrus plant for each one of those, I gave them eight. Uh, creating in these benches that they had already, creating these squares, uh, a little pergola. So it was something really simple, but not. And here, um, so this it was the way to mark the spaces and not to prune and not to clean. This was the earth that we had. And this was the preparation of the earth for the planting of the lemon trees. For the preparation of the earth of the plant of the lemon trees, we went to the forest and we collect poop from I don't know what. Uh, we collect earth in places where we had uh, leaves. And I have my dog here that is boring. <laughs> and, and that's it. And this was it. Now is this what we have. I have to go back in, uh, in soon and, and check it. And this is the, well, now I will pass fast some pictures of gardens done, repetition of something that you've already seen, of some nicer pictures of places. Okay. And this is the end of the talk. And here I, I like to use this, that I use it for other talk, but I like it a lot. This is um, um, a poesia from Machado, Manuel Machado. It was the brother of Antonio Machado. Uh, and I'm going to read it in Spanish and I'm going to try to translate it to English. It's verano, frutales cargados, dorados trigales, cristales ahumados, quemados jarales, 
Umbría, sequía, solano, paleta completa, verano. It means eh, frutales cargados is the fruit trees full of fruits. Dorados trigales is this, is the wheat uh, part that is golden. Um, the windows that are burning. Quemados jarales. La jara is the cistus laranifer that is burned. Umbria, uh, umbria sequia. It's like shady draughtness. Uh, a lot of sun. A complete palette. It's summer. So this is something that as Mediterraneans, I think that is not bad. Is what we have, and that's it. Fantastic. That, um, thank you very much for that. Um, very stimulated, incredibly detailed um, approach, different sites, diversity, changing our mind about what we find beautiful. I found it extremely, um, here I have sun, um, stimulating, and I'm sure that everyone did too. So I'm going to um, get everyone to unmute and then let's try and have some um, debate. I'm going to shut my curtain, excuse me. <laughs> Valeria, they're beautiful. Thank, thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you so much also for looking at the, you know, for, for thinking of so much about, um, about the proper use of water and, um, you know, a la Filippi. Thank you, yeah. Bye. I mean, thank you for, bye-bye. Oh, thank you, what's great. Yeah, the second garden, particularly Valerio, that was just incredible, the um, Can Rey. Um, no, sorry, the, uh, the Punta, Punta Arabi. I mean, both of them. Both the Arabi is the one in the, with the sea. With the sea. Okay. Um, but the, also the, the, the Canre with the, 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 the imposing of the structure that resembles the external Salinas. I found them really, really, it was really good to look at a project way in detail. You know, often we, we don't get that detail from speakers. So, I mean, you really mm -hmm. took a lot of time Mm. To, to, to give us a real insight into your work. Um, fantastic. Thank you, Angela. I had, um, okay, so there was one question that I did make. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about the uh, pistachia lentiscus. You yeah. mentioned that it's used in some, wh where it grows, the soil is enriched or, or, or better. Did I understand that right? Yes. Yes, Pistacia lentiscus has, well, I, I'm not so technician, but the Pistacia lentiscus, um, what it creates is a lot of, um, of microbiological life underneath. Uh, the, the leaves of Pistacia lentiscus is the compost uh, quite fast and it's a good plant to use in compost pits. And, and it's a... Um, yeah, here I'm trying to reproduce uh, micro, uh, effective microorganisms from the forest, mm -hmm. and and I always try to to pick this kind of. And I at the end I, I go I take a bit the new foliage of the the, the last one in fall in fall, and then you go to the lower part, and you will see that it's a more a, a more humic. I'm sorry, sorry. I'm being called, but I don't want to be called. <laughs> excuse, ah. me, excuse me, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. No, no. It's your birthday. I know. <laughs> but it's, uh, I, sorry. I mean, no, no, I, could, no, no. I was actually thinking I should have moved this. We should have done a Thursday. I'm, it should have been tomorrow, maybe. Okay, so uh, it composts fast and creates... Composts like, fast and underneath the, the life of microorganisms is really high. So here in the in Ibiza, the two plants that the earth underneath is good, it's normally Pistacia lentiscus and it's uh, Teratonia siliqua, el carrubo. Teratonia? Uh,
Okay, well, that's good to know. I mean, Ceratonia is, is a, a massive tree, so... Yeah, Ceratonia dienis is a leguminosa, so all the leguminosas normally they raise the nitrogen yeah. in the ground. In the case of pistachia, uh, it's more about the microorganisms underneath. Cool. And the end of this part of microorganisms, I see that it's... I don't know much, but the few experiences that I had I find really good results. Makes at the end activate the soil, activate the ground, creates much more resistant plants. Maybe you don't have a huge growth, but what it grows, it grows well. Mm. Fantastic. Very interesting. Has you... anybody... Yeah. No, sorry, I was going to say, do you know of an equivalent um, shrub that is slightly hardier? Sorry? Do you, do you have do you know of a, um, anything similar to the pistachia, which is hardier? That because the pistachia is not very hardy, is it? In, yeah. in so, so fine for Ibiza, but for, for slightly nor, more northern climes. Where, where are you, patients? Ah, yes, I'm in I'm in the east of the the, the east of Suffolk, so. Oh. <laughs> okay. in, well, it's you you laugh, but it's. No. It's very dry and it's and it it's nothing like as hot as Ibiza, obviously. But okay. we do we do have frost, but because yeah. we're on a peninsula, we don't actually have much frost. We rarely have frost. Yeah. Fact, surprisingly. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure for your climate. No, no, no. It's a it's a completely different thing. And um, patience, when um when we get um Dave Ward from Beth Chateau, I mean he'll yeah, yeah, be the yeah. guy. Yes. To speak to you about um, December. We have uh, the Staculentisco here that grows wild. And we go down to minus 12 in the winter yeah. and up to 40 in the summer. And it grows wild here with no problems at all. And uh, so it, it's, I think it's a very uh, hardy plant. It's really hardy. In, in, yeah, really in, happy. in mainland than I thought. Okay. Spain, we have it in in around Madrid and in spaces that in winter you go to 20 below okay. and in summer you will go over 40. Okay. The I, thing missed... I don't know the amount of water, but pistachia lentiscus is kind of a tricky plant uh, because when you buy it from nursery, it takes a bit of time to root properly and to grow properly. Once is there and once it's rooted properly it's a bomb here in, in at, at least in Ibiza and most of the Mediterranean coastal area is really really strong. Hmm. You probably were misled by the name is something to do with pistachio it makes you think no of no no I, I, I no I checked I checked it up and I think the information I was given was oh, I'm joking, I'm joking. So, thank you so much. But I, I saw pistachia lentiscus growing in Austria in high altitude in the okay Alps. yeah I've I mean I've seen it much in Italy but um I just wasn't sure what it's you know what its hardiness was okay Sorry. Patient, I think you'll need to keep watch out for winter waterlogging. I think that's what um, kills things. Yeah, we, we, we don't have that problem. We're on sand. Good. Well, you should be fine. I mean, um, Philippi on his website says it will tolerate temperatures down to minus 15. But uh, it, well, know, that, will, that will require a, a, a completely dry route run, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're at south facing sand, so that should be fine. Mm. <laughs> Sounds lovely. <laughs> well, it can be. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, on the chat, um, Susan was asking about the um, uh, the mustard. What's the botanical name for mustard? Cinnabis. I have to check it. Cinnabis. I. Okay. Yeah. I... Okay. Okay. Cinnabis. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Cinnabis. I don't remember. Cinnabis. Is it is it what they is that is that like what they would plant as a commercial crop? Asa? Valerio. Sorry. Is that senapis what they would plant as a commercial crop in larger fields? Look here, here uh, I don't remember uh, which one was this one exactly. Um, this was a, a mix of of revegetation for uh, for roads. 
this kind and it, it was done with hydrosiembra. How do you call it? When you do it with a with a pump with water and you spray water, soap, and seeds, and then it grows what it grows. And the oh, one that okay. exploded, it was the sinapis. Mm -hmm. But it was more plants there. At the end, it was a, a ground that we took, I think there, I don't remember, it was 40 or 60 centimeters of, of, of soil. So the ground that we had, it was really, really poor. And, and it was not growing nothing. So it was a way to activate and to introduce some plant heart mm -hmm. to start making this move. And now, after this activation has passed two years with all the COVID, blah, 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 this year, we will start planting really hard plants as Fodelus, uh, Tapsia, things like this, Carrot, Amos Daucus, all these things to, to start having there something that will, that will be movement. Mm. OK. That spraying of the, it's called hydro seed. Yes, hydro seed. That's the word, right? Yeah, hydro seed. Thank you, Barbara. Um, can we uh, take another couple of questions, please? Yeah. Um, firstly, very quickly, um, that same garden, uh, this is me asking now, um, behind the pool, the main swimming pool, there was a sort of a, a pink colored, um, was it a grass? What, what was that? The pink one. Mm. This is Mullenberger. Yeah. Capillaris. This is a really strong plant. Um, and there is another one that is really similar, but this was the... Uh, There's a white one as well. Mulemerja, there are many. Yeah, but yeah. And this one, there is a variety that is uh, white, but there is also another one that is really similar that it starts with E. I'm terrible with with uh, I <laughs> with the names of the plant. They come and go really easily in my so head. It's the same size as the because I've got that pink one, Yvonne, mm -hmm. um, and but it's only a baby. And this year it hasn't done nothing actually. I'm talking very sternly to it. <laughs> um, um, I got it from the guys in Sardinia. Oh. Um, Ivan Italo. See, I got that there, and they also had another one which is beginning with a D. We're not. We're all going. Through. Your one is the same. It's the same size, is it? The one that you want to say with beginning with E. Yes, it's same. It's same size. Uh, uh, same, same size, um, oh. and it starts with E, and it doesn't come. I'm looking it. I'm terrible with this. Okay, well, we can. It's a limus and it's not a limus. Mm. So I, would be, I would be interested in that because I want to plant it in front of the sea because following, um, um, you know, the guy, Russell Page, yes. uh, he says, no pink in front of the sea. Okay. <laughs> So, but they're lovely, they're fantastic plants. So I've got pink ones at the back of the house. And then in front of the, I would like to keep the sort of repetition going, okay. but have white, you know, the- The, 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 the Mullenberger is white. One second that I took a catalog to remember the name. All right. <laughs> we can get it later from you. It's very long this session, my friends. Um, where are we? What time is it? It's 24 minutes past seven. No, that's okay, that's okay. Okay. Now, I've got one more question on the chat I'd, I'd like to make sure we don't lose. Yeah, but, it's yeah. Mullenbergia capillaris, and there's different varieties of them. Pink moly is just the general name, um, but the white one is called white cloud, and it's a variety of capillaris. Oh. Yes, it's a variety. They're all varieties. There's many pink but, varieties. But Caroline, I Regal think Mist, Regal Mist is a very common pink one, and it's very striking. Mm -hmm. But we don't get this degree of hybridization. Well, look for Capillaris. Yeah, we'll... Capillaris is the, is this the species, and White Cloud is the white one. Okay. And it's a gorgeous one. It gets quite. It gets bigger than the pink one, and it's really striking, especially on mass. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're still searching for that other varietal. I'm going to tell you. 
Uh, it's a really normal plant. It's not, and there are several. In in Mullenberga, I, I this one I've used a bit, and then there are others that are really nice. That is the um, the Linden Mary. Linden Mary is a bomb. It's really really strong. And How do you say Mary, it's a bigger one. It's white um, with, with white flowers. It's a bit spiky, and it creates a nice shape. And it's a really nice one. And then I'm trying now here, but this one needs a little bit of water. And it's difficult to find it here in Europe. That is Dumosa. Dumosa, I think it comes from Arizona. And it call, it's a kind of a fake bamboo of one meter fifty. And it's really nice because it's really vaporous. And I'm pretty sure Dumosa is a California native and it does quite well here. Um, it's California. But it can be a little bit invasive. But it's okay. a it's a very elegant plant. Yes, it is. Brilliant. Okay. And so, what the last question on the chat, Yvonne? Yes, please. Um, uh, Jim Drysdale would like to talk about the August August um, uh, or what we would call here um, estivation, I suppose. Yeah. When um, and for those of us who, when everything gets looking all crisped up in July, and we're tempted to get the hose out, what do you? you know, what is the importance of allowing the garden to sleep in August? How do you see that? Really important. Depending how often you want to change the plants. Yeah. <laughs> you want to make them live longer, don't water them in summer. You can help them. And in my mental garden, what I do is to push the plants to the limit. And some of them sometimes die. And that is where I see the real limit of the plant. Um, but at the end, it's like a, a sport man that is working as, I don't know, a football player, a tennis player, that they are pushing, pushing so hard to the body that when I arrive 35 years old, their body is completely okay. destroyed. So uh, with a plant, it's the same. If you see, last year I was in, a, in the botanical garden in Madrid, and, and there was a garden at the entrance that is being done by a colleague. He does really nice combination of plants, but the soil it was completely humic. And, and within the irrigation, that to have the irrigation is not that you have to water daily or every three days or whatever. And it was the flummies. There were many flummies full of leaves with all these leaves yellowish, but because of fungus. And at the end, uh, flummies, many times they lose completely, totally the leaves and this takes only the stems. So to make to the plant and force to the plant to make this effort, um, at the end it will be shorter their life. Mm. Because well, the summer or the or the thistus, the thistus, you can see all the thistus how they with the leaves suddenly it arrives the summer and, and they close to, to, to themselves. And to see this kind of little processes, I think is a really powerful tool that has a garden if the person that is working in the garden takes the time to look because it's not it's not good or bad it's their time and they have to rest but i mean this year for the first time my plant my flomuses have they're now stalks so i've always had leaves there yes all summer because i'm not in a very drastic Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got water. I mean, we haven't had any water since May, yeah. and now I'm. I mean, I'm looking at stalks. So, yeah. I mean, I haven't watered them, but I'm thinking, are they dead? You know, don't I, I so. don't know. Don't think so. They'll come back. My, mm, They're deeply yes. unattractive. Deeply I've seen <laughs> things incredible with flummies. It's just stress. <laughs> <laughs> It's just called stress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Galera, do you find that that flomus is relatively short lived? I mean, I've never been able to get one to go more than three, four years. No, I've and got that's uh, in California. I don't know. And it is giving it a little supplemental water because 
I'm in really dry sandy soil if I don't forget it. <laughs> this is the, well, the sandy soil is good because the big problem with plants here in the Mediterranean is always that big parts of the Mediterranean is clay, so really compact fly, grounds. And this is, and these are plants that normally they don't like to be with with these conditions. Um, <clears throat> another well, thing I, that... I, I, if I can just interrupt, I've got um, the Flomus fruticosa. Yeah. He's here since two thousand and four. He's on pure clay, and he's fantastic. Okay. It's the one is Italia che yeah. è andato via. The one Italia is a little, uh, always more yeah. floppy, stringy, yeah. fl falling over. But the fr fruticosa has lasted for twenty what's from two thousand and four to now. So yeah, also years. it's old seed, so you've always got it. It's not yeah. like it's difficult to to keep going. Right. Uh, and, and another reason not to water it because it will set seed better, yeah. surely. Yeah, and for me, the, all these plants, you have to think that many of these plants, they are not long, long living plants, like a lavender or a, sometimes they live, sometimes they, after four years, I had a sage, for example, the sage is a really tricky plant and it's really easy to, to see how they grow really fast and suddenly in two days, boom, they go and a fusarium or whatever, it kills them. And it has happened to me in plants with zero water. So there are many times that it's like, I don't really understand, but what I, what I changed my mind is I'm not so fixed with the plant I'm having. Right, right. Mm. Gardens that are more in movement. So, okay, it's gone. I have now the opportunity yeah, yeah, yeah. to plant other plant. I know that many times you say, but this was a beautiful plant, it's big, it's- oh, I still didn't send that email. Um, Excuse me, who's talking? Oh. <laughs> Mute, Nicola, <laughs> naughty. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So where there's a there's a where there's a, where there comes a hole, there's an opportunity to do something new. Do something. Yeah. Well, that's a good. That's a good. Uh, a good. Yeah, and for for me, it's more static in a garden. The structure, and of course, a structure, a pistachio lentiscus, a myrtus, a carob, an olive. So it's plants that are a filidea. It's plants that are going to live 30, 40, 60, 100 years with no problem. In the case of a lavender, of a plumage, of a, is this part that is going to be changing? And I find it interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you on behalf of everybody here. I'm sure that we were, you know, we've we've had a really, really fascinating tour of thank your, you. thank your you. island and your Happy garden birthday. and your approaches. Yes, I'm going for posh nosh. <laughs> It, good food, nice dinner. Right. So yeah. I love you and leave you all. I'll see you. Thank uh, you very much. In a, Thank in you, Valerio. Thank, Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Valerio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Arrivederci.